The goal of this experiment is to determine what will happen when people are put in a prison setting and how they conform to the roles of prisoners and guards. The experiment will take place over the course of two weeks in the music wing of a high school converted into a prison. The main thing we are looking for, again, will be conformity, which is compliance with standards, rules, laws, and whatnot. During the experiment, the prisoners became de-individuated, or stripped of their identities. They were given numbers and only referred to as such. The guards, on the other hand, were dehumanized as they kept themselves hidden behind their uniforms and sunglasses. As the experiment went on, people became more and more obedient in their roles. They started to comply more and more with the authority. Learned helplessness is a term we use to describe when people give up, in a sense. They simply accept that their condition is the way it is, and it won't change. We see this in the prisoners when they stop rebelling, stop arguing, and stop hoping. As the experiment went on, a definite sense of prejudice sprang up against the prisoners, and the guards started viewing them less and less as equals. This, of course, gave way to the discrimination we saw during the experiment. Closely related to the learned helplessness we talk about is the self-fulfilling prophecy. This is the tendency for a belief of an individual, whether innate or brought about by others, to influence their actions, making it a reality. We see this as the prisoners, after being treated so poorly, start to think of themselves as less than the guards and become much more submissive to them. They truly think they are prisoners. I made an appearance at the experiment. Concerned for the validity of the experiment, I asked Zimbardo what the independent variable is. He got angry and brushed me off. Because of groupthink, he refused to answer any questions about his project, as to not obstruct the continuation of the experiment. During visitors' days, there were many rumors circulating about a possible escape plot. In fear, Zimbardo and the guards moved the prisoners to a different area of the building. The rumors ended up being just rumors, which greatly angered the guards. Because of cognitive dissonance, Zimbardo thought that the prisoners were all at fault, so he had the prisoners punished so his actions matched his thoughts. They used the positive punishment of forced push-ups and the negative punishment of restricting their eating. I was the first outsider to object to the experiment and question its morality. The way the prisoners were treated was appalling. Zimbardo, although he started with ethical intentions, ended up confusing his roles of prison master and head researcher. Soon after my visit, the experiment was called to an end. The experiment was technically safe and legal, however, we will never know the validity of it. All the students signed a consent form previous to participating in the study. The study was also approved by the Stanford Human Subjects Review Committee, Stanford Psychology Department, and the Group Effectiveness Branch of the Office of Naval Research. Additionally, the American Psychological Association evaluated the experiment and stated that all of the existing ethical guidelines at the time were followed. Zimbardo has apologized to the sufferings of the participants. Please don't look that. <laughs> <laughs>